Looking at Joel chapter 2, and then that verse, verse 25. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar, and the palmer word, my great army, which I sent among you. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. So as I said, we are in the year theme, kingdom restores. Kingdom restores. And this new year today, I want to speak from the sermon topic, God restores. Amen. Oh my, oh my, God restores. Why the need for God to restore? When you have been in a place of plenty and now you are in a place of poverty, you stand in need of restoration. If you were ever in a place of leadership and now you find that others are leading you, you stand in need of restoration. When you were in a desired and admired place, but now you are in a place of pity and shame, you long for the days when things were better. Well, in the text set before us, the children of Israel are in a dire state. This is where they are at. God's children... Hmm, God's chosen nation are at a place of deficit. Why? Because they made a choice to disobey God. God set out parameters or boundary rules or lines for them, and they ignored God. Let me make it plain. The people of God ignored God. The children of God ignored God. The apple of his eye, the nation of Israel, ignored God. Hence, this, this disobedience has now carried with it a set of consequences or punishment. You can't do wrong and think that nothing will happen because of it. You know that's not how it goes. We actually are quite familiar with God's restoration to those who were mistreated or missing something. Recall the widow who was about to have her two sons sold into slavery in order to pay debts. God moved upon the prophet Elisha to give her instructions. This led to her being restored. Yeah. Look at this verse or these verses in reference to her restoration. 2 Kings 4, 6, and 7, it reads, And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, go sell the oil and pay the debt. So God does believe in paying debts back. Okay. And live thou and thy children of the rest. The widow experiences the wonder of God's restorative ability. Your loss is only appreciated after God restores to you that which you lost. This is when you can see that what you lost, hey, hear me somebody, what you lost was a part of God's plan to demonstrate his divine favor in your life. And the question that one must ask themselves is, can I stand to lose? See, see, I, I, I've learned in my journey of 50 years that losing was always a set up for the next place of gain. That, that when I got to that next place, that next level, I was able to look back and say, I made it. I'm all right. 
That is cool. Ah, oh, that weren't too bad after all. <laughs> this widow and her sons and the neighbors could now appreciate God, my God, on a higher scale, a higher level because they experienced, they saw it, that God restores. And God used their vessels to do it. <laughs> what about David? <laughs> Through his own sinful ways of iniquity, he chose to sin and they uncovered this sin. Well, God's all seeing eye saw this, <laughs> and God removed himself from David so that David no longer had the heart or poetic voice to sing of the goodness of God. You ever thought about that? With all the singing that David did, with all the poetic writing that he did, how can you sing in disobedience? Come on, somebody. How can you talk about your writing a poem in disobedience? Okay, I know how it can happen because you've learned how to do it. You see? But we just don't want to do something. We want to be the something that we are doing. We want to be a being doing, not a doing, just pretending to be. Ah, so uh, David was bereft of the presence of God. Yet through confession of his sin and a contrite heart and a broken and humble spirit, David received mercy from God. Look at David's words concerning this period in his life, Psalms 52, verses 11 through 13. It reads, Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, mm -hmm. and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Can you see your church? That when we get it straight, the, si the sinners can See it, my Lord. <laughs> Hear me. Every time God restores is so that others will see what God has done for you. Others will understand that God picks up and places you up. God comes to see about you to see you through. God restores so that you can tell the story. My God, if God has ever done something for you. Matter of fact, last night, last week, when God does something, somebody needs to hear what God has done. Somebody needs to be an eyewitness or an ear witness to the wonders of God. God does not restore you just for you. No, 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 no. Uh, there is the kingdom of heaven. Ah, uh, there is the way of the Lord. And God does what he does so that he gets the glory. Well, the same for the text today. God will use this account of his people to teach all people, including us, the people of Bermuda the people of Shekinah Worship Center. From the place of shame to the place of gain, we will understand the ways of God as we look at the following three points. Point number one, before the locust. Before the locust. Point number two, beware of the locust. Beware of the locust. And point number three, beyond the locust. Come on, somebody. Beyond the locust. Point one, before the locust. As I meditated on the book of Joel, I recognized that it is written for all of time. Time past, time today, time tomorrow. The prophet Joel speaks to his yesterday, today, and to the future. In the same way, we can speak to the past days, the present days, and the days to come. For the record, as Joel speaks concerning Israel, he speaks to when Israel had plenty. Then when they lost plenty, 
and how God will restore plenty. This is the pattern by which God deals with his people. You got to study the word to see it there. Sadly, as in our day, when a people become rich and endowed with many material things of this present life, they can become entrapped in the present. Hey, and focused on the fact that no matter how comfortable it gets here, this is where my focus is, no matter how comfortable it gets here, no matter how many material things I have, no matter how much money I have in the bank, this is not my final home. I, I do declare that the church has begotten an attitude and a spirit of hearness. Careness. You know, the irony is you could have built the biggest cathedral. Great, small, but only what you do for Christ will last. And some of the greatest cathedrals all over the world, sanctuaries are empty. Uh, there's an equalizer that came about to demonstrate what things will be. So, so therefore, I can't get comfortable here because here it switches up. But my aim and my focus is over there. Hallelujah. And, and while I'm, by the way, while I'm preaching this sermon, that time can come. So, 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 so therefore, listen, we got the house, we got the car, you know, got the three girls, and praise the Lord, all graduated from university. But that's not what it's about. Here is about there. But if you get consumed with money, consumed with material things, you will experience what Israel did. So understand this. Exercise all you want. Now, I'm not saying don't exercise. You know I'm going to start again tomorrow. But exercise all you want. Have all types of... I wish I could nip and tie. Have all types of surgeries that you want. You will only last but for so long on this terrestrial bowl. Ask Betty White. My girl. We have a, three seconds of silence. And she was my girl. You were, you were laughing. She probably would have laughed too. She was my girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Thank you for being a friend. Traveled up the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal and a confidant. Sing it, sing it. And if I threw a party and invited everyone you knew, you would see the biggest gift would be from me. And the card attached would say, thank you for being a friend. I want to thank you. Quiet. I had no idea. That's the influence. As beautiful, fit, and sound as you can be, this is not our final place. Listen here. God made this dust to return from whence it came from. Dust. The more you live or the longer you live, the truth is the dustier you get. Now, strange. At this point, God would not stop me from thinking about how people, as they get older, get shorter. Watch this. Folks. Oh Lord, I ain't looking at anybody. The dust is breaking down. That's all I'm saying. Let the record stay. I used to look up to some and now the eye oh, level. <laughs> ain't no surgery for that. Hence. The lesson of God is to drive a people into the reality that they need them now. 
You need to obey God now because history shows that without God, a people and a place fail. Without God, the bright, the future will never be bright. It will always be a fight. Church, there is a reason that the locust will come. In chapter 1 of Joel, the people have not been fully committed to God. They have taken up the ways of the world. They have forgotten the faithfulness of God. Mankind have turned to their own ways. The ways of the world have crept into the lives of God's people. Notice I said God's people. The ways of the world can't creep into the ways of the world. Here is a good time to remind you of a scripture. Look at these scriptures. Proverbs 3 and 12. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. Even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. The more you love your child, the more you love them, the more you have to talk. I didn't say they're going to like it. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 6 and 7. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges, scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? You have to question yourself. I have to question myself. If I know I'm doing wrong, watch it now. If I know I'm doing wrong and God isn't chastening me, that is trouble. But if I know I'm doing wrong and I'm kind of miserable about it, that's a good start. Because as a good father, God will now chasten his people. In other words, the text, God will allow consequences to unfold in order to bring you back into his fold. Did you get that? Let the consequences unfold. Maybe that will bring them back to the right line and bring them in the fold. God's love. You see, Judah, Jerusalem, had been under the evil leadership of Queen Mother Athalia. Her reign was evil and devastating, and a reign of terror in which the people turned to worshiping idols. She is the niece or daughter of King Ahab. Remember him? Jezebel's husband? Jezebel, mm hmm. Let me say here that from the beginning of time, it has been proven that when leadership, the leadership is an anti-holiness leadership or in some way against God, the fallout is that the nation follows the leadership that does not follow God. I'm going to say it again. When churches are just okay to settle, with whatever the government says, however the government says it, that's an issue. Even if we don't get what we want from them, their favor, do you know that God favors us because we went after his perfect will? But no, we've got now Israel in cahoots with Jezebel's people. Yeah. And so this is what happened, and God is not pleased. God does not wink at sin. God will deal with it, not merely as a punishment, but to push his people back to him. Oh, follow me, church. God will use nature to humble a people. Understand that every time there is a major natural disaster or attack, the people do what? Turn to God. Yeah. Come on now. After 9-11, you couldn't find a seat in the church. When a hurricane comes this way, all of a sudden, everybody prays. Same thing. They may not last, but the response is to pray and ask God for his help. This has happened. This has been a devastation. A devastation of locust to the land. Let me read it. Joel chapter 1 verse 4. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust 
hath left hath the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, the caterpillar has eaten. Can you, church, I pray, can you see the plan of the enemy here is to steal, kill, and destroy? It's not bad enough, that palmer worm, but you got to add the locust, you got to add the canker worm, and the caterpillar. I'm trying to tell you that's the plan of the enemy. Let me read some wonderful and picturesque commentary about these locusts. And this is coming from the Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown commentary on Joel chapter 1. Listen to me so you understand. Four species or stages of locusts rather than four different insects. One, just one. Yay. Ah, Holy Ghost, thank you. You can have one person. But if they operate in different stages, you don't know what you're going to get. That's what we're looking at. One species. All right. This is what is meant. Literally, one, the gnawing. Let's take you right there. The gnawing locust. Two, the swarming locust. Three. The licking locust, they'll lick you to death. Mm -hmm. Four, and the consuming locust, forming a climax to the most destructive kind. The last is often three inches long with two antennae, each an inch long. One third of its body is feeling you up. Come on, somebody. Somebody always checking somebody out, the antenna. Hmm. The two hinder of its six feet are larger than the rest, adapting it for leaping. Be careful of the locusts this year, folks. Huh, ya shakunda, yeah. Huh? There's that when they see you praising God, you getting free, wanna leap on you. Huh? Wanna devour you, wanna lick you up, talk with the tongue. Huh? Watch it now, watch it. Get the messaging that's happening. This is, this is how you conquer that which wants to conquer you. You've got to know what you're dealing with. God said this year, you're going to be dealing with locusts. You think I'm just preaching this to preach? Look at this now. I continue reading. The first kind is that of the locust having just emerged from the egg in spring and without wings. It's just little and seems innocent. Wouldn't even take notice of it. Just, just innocent. Hmm? Just innocent. The second is when at the end of spring, stealing their first skin, the locusts put forth little ones without legs or wings. So even though it's little, Kathy, it has the ability of reproducing. Okay. The third when after their third casting of the old skin, they get small wings which enable them to leap better but not to fly. So where they were leaping one foot, now they can leap six. So where one person could be attacked in the congregation, now three of you can. Okay, all right, see, you go some more. Mm, like, happy New Year, Pastor. Mm, get me happy. Get me happy after a little while. Being unable to go away till their wings are matured, they devour all before them, grass, shrubs, and barks of trees, translated rough caterpillars. The fourth kind are the matured winged locusts. And folks, they will wreak havoc on the land. They will destroy everything in sight. Watch out. For the locusts. Church, the Israelites know of such locusts from when God sent the plague of locusts to Egypt. So understand, watch this, God will use what taught your enemies a lesson on you if need be. Their food storage is gone. There's no grain, hence there's no wine. Crops are failing. 
there is nothing to eat. Church, do not look at the shortage of food around the world and the skyrocketing prices as normal. They are cruel evidences of the realities of God using our own devices to teach us to call upon him. Mm. This is what continues in Joel chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. The word of the Lord came to Joel, the son of Pethuel. Hear this, ye old man, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Had this been in your days or in the days of your fathers, tell your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Hmm. What has happened before must be told to the people, to the young ones. We learned Psalms 24. Today, so many don't know that there is a Psalms. I'm telling you, you've forgotten. As I said, what has happened before must be told. Why talk to the youth? Well, they don't recall when Sundays were sacred. They don't recall when you were not to leave your yard on a Sunday. <laughs> they don't recall when Bermuda was quiet on a Sunday. Therefore, unless we tell them of how it was, they will experience devastation and not be aware of why times are hard. Times are difficult because we have forgotten the sacredness of God. We have not taught the generation or the next generation to trust God. No, trust government. Trust, trust businesses. Trust this pillar of the economy. Huh? Hence, when you see the violence in Bermuda seemingly out of nowhere, oh, it has come from somewhere. It is because they do not value God or God's laws. Joel knows why he sees what he sees. And the question is, do you know why you see what you see? You know, people be on Facebook, what's the answer? What's the sense of me telling them they need to go back to God? They have become so ungodly. The moment you even hint, well, we'll come and pick them up. We'll bring them to, ah, locusts be going to you. And I'm very serious. And so Joel, he sees it. And you and I must know the same. Before the locusts came, they left. They left God's presence. And they left from the ways of God. When God is no longer precious to you, you will experience life being handled like it is not precious. Oh, freely on social media, you know, freely. Government just needs to hurry and legalize weed. So we just need to, we, I want to see how legalizing weed is going to stop the crime. That's what they're trying to tell you. Heard early fighting because they're fighting again. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. But I'm telling you the condition of the land. Point number two, beware of the locusts. I want to read some verses here. Joel chapter 2, 1 through 4. The word of the Lord. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong, there hath not been ever the light, neither shall be any more after it even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses and of horsemen, so shall they run. Church, God is not finished, watch how I say it, rewarding the people for their sin and shame. 
If you thought the consequences of chapter 1 were bad, it's worse in chapter 2. When a people refuse to repent and they continue in the ways that God is not pleased with, God has a reward. Locusts are coming. There is a time that you have not seen before. They are on their way. You know, we look at the riders on the road, the roughnecks fighting literally in the streets, the elaborate abuse of substances, and we wonder why such devastation is happening. The question is, what are we teaching the younger generations? We may be an Eden or a paradise, yet when God chastens, that paradise will feel like it is no paradise at all. Now, I love me my Bermuda. Well, I'm reading the comments. What has become of my Bermuda? Can't even be safe. All that. I'm like, there's safety here. But you don't want the safe place. Beware. Because of the locusts to come, hear the instructions for God's people. 12 and 13. Therefore also now saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting and with weeping and with mourning and render your heart, and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. These verses are key. I am shocked at the lack of horror and grief by the churches concerning what is going on in Bermuda. Where are the weeping prophets? Where are the voices that mourn the spiritual condition of Bermuda? And listen, don't show me how you ran your clothes. I don't want to see an open visual of grief. We can all learn to do that. What God desires is a rendering of your heart. Where are the hearts of God's people? Are we so consumed with selfishness that we consume ourselves? You see, there is a reason for the warning. I shared watch night service from the topic, watch God bless. Here is the thing, that when the people repent, when the people turn from their own ways, when the people put God first, this is when God will repent of what he shall do. This is when we can watch God bless. Everything is conditional. You ought not be given your children, I'm just going to say it, candy right before dinner. You tell them you finish your dinner, you may get a reward. Don't mess them up and give them all this sweet and the taste buds go sky high for the sweet thing. Ask me how I knew. Huh? And, and then you, you turn around and try to show them green vegetables. No, thank you. I've already received my heart's delight. And that's what's happening in the world. I'm telling you, we have given the people the candy. Oh, you don't need to be in church. Oh, you can just be home. We can shut it down when we want. Uh, you know, just get yourself a safe key and apply for certain numbers. You can do it inside. In other words, if you give us the money, you'll get what you want. God will bless when we deal with the mess. Can't skip over it. For our God is gracious. Gracious coming from the word Hanan. Only used as an attribute of God as hearing the cry of the vexed debtor. I am a vexed debtor. I stand in need of the grace of God. Oh, outside of God, I would be the mess. I would be a messy person. Uh, yet God, in this state, because I call on you, I know that you will grant me grace. We owe God if we repent. And then God will hear us and repent of his punishment he has towards us. Merciful, coming from the Hebrew word, Rehum, meaning compassionate, always of God. There is a compassion, unlike any other compassion, and it's God's compassion. That when we were right 
justly deserving of those consequences, God turns it around for us. Come on. I should have gotten punished. I, I should have been uh, handled a certain way, but because of God's mercy, he skipped right over me. He said, I see you. I see your repentance. I see your heart. And so for that reason, you know what? I'm just going to kiss you with mercy one more time. And then the text says that he's slow to anger, of, uh, meaning nostril, nurse, face. Watch, watch this. God will not consume us with the breath of his nostrils or the fiery glory of his exposed face. Remember, we can't see him and live, right? So he keeps it hidden uh, when he could expose it and get rid of us, uh-huh. Uh, which we cannot handle. We can't handle that right now. We cannot look upon God and live. So God, he is slow to anger. And then it says, there's great kindness with God coming from the word hasid, meaning absolute. You can count on God. Can I stop right here? I know it's a heavy sermon and the text is what the text is. I can't make it say happy stuff when it says what it says. But can I encourage you that that when you stay repentful before God, that God's grace, yeah. his mercy, his yeah. kindness, yeah. oh my goodness, is all towards you. And so God isn't going to leave you. He, he isn't going to forsake you. No, no, you just have to wake up every day and say, God, uh, thank you for breath. <laughs> thank you. Oh my God. Thank you that I can breathe. I can think. I know my name. Uh, uh, it's a lot of things I can thank you for, God. And God, listen, when other people take it for granted, just wake up and move. Don't honor you. Don't worship you. I'm going to be a part of that called out people, the remnant. I know all right, but I'm right enough where I'm going to worship you and I'm going to say thank you, God. <laughs> I'm going to honor you so that what? So that just in case, perchance, you're mad with your chosen people that because there is a group of people we're not perfect, we may be halt, we may be limping we may be lame but somebody knows no matter what condition I'm in, I'm coming to the house of the Lord because when I get here he's not going to look at my limp, my lame and my languishing, he's going to look right in my heart and he's going to pull on the reins of my heart to see how I feel about him that's the difference, your heart no easy thing but your heart and understand this when God is kind no one can undo his kindness I love it they are absolute whom God blesses no man can curse <laughs> I didn't say they couldn't say it they couldn't wish it and think it Oh, my God, there's a confidence I have in God. Hee! And that takes me to my final point, point number three, beyond the locust. Folks, there's a lesson to be learned beyond the crisis of the day. What will you look like after it's all said and done? You know, what will churches look like? I'm going to tell you they'll never look the same. Because many congregations have now convinced themselves we didn't even need to be in the building. I'll just zoom up fine. I need to get dressed up. I need to go to work. Just let those three, four, whoever carry it, and we'll just sit back and watch. I need to go. And God himself said, don't forsake it. You, 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 you've got to understand, forsaking the assembling of the church together is not a difficult thing to understand during good times. It's during the challenging times, right now, that you're going to be challenged to get together. The world trained us how to get it done through technology. The world has now crippled people into a mindset. Be safe in your own little four walls. If you stay home, you ain't got to wear a mask. Go to church, you got to wear a mask. Oh, a mind to shift so that the enemy can control your worship. That's why I tell you, church, I, I love your old people because you know how to worship in a mask. Oh, you know how to praise God in a mask. 
Matter of fact, whether you've got a mask on or not, the, the message that you're sending is, my praise and worship is unmasked. Hallelujah. You don't know how precious that is. Because not every church experiences it. What will it look like after all is said and done? What will? Will you have learned your lesson? 16 and 17, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. In other words, whatever you're doing, time to gather. No excuse. Let the priests, here we go, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar. And let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should, should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, where is their God? Come on now. If Seaman if didn't say nothing, people like, Seaman ain't saying nothing. Why she ain't got nothing to say nothing? Oh, no, she got to show up. Read the text. <laughs> In other words, God, God is not calling on the sinners, the heathen, to repent. Why would they repent? They're not saved yet. No, 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 no. God is calling on his people, the church, to repent. Turn from your foolishness. Stop doing what displeases God. What many churches don't realize is that by the church, the bride of Christ, doing wrong, this is a greater error than sinners doing wrong. If you're married to somebody and you know of somebody else that's cheating, it's a bad thing. But if your spouse is cheating, oh, somebody going to jail, it's going to be a funeral. You see, it's different than it's you. The bride of Christ. Ah, come on, can I tell you that God still wants his bride spotless? Without wrinkles? Come on, don't make me go there. You come church, you got to iron your clothes. You stay home, wrinkles will go. Come on, somebody. Uh, you think it's all a mindset, slacking it off. And you all know I'm talking the truth. Or just iron the top. Come on, somebody. I'm telling you what I'm doing. What? You know, or, or put them in the dryer for five minutes. Get the wrinkles out. Mm. Can I tell you, can we celebrate right here, that I'm so glad for a church that has a people that say, I'm going to prepare to go into God's house. I'm going to get myself together, my mind, my heart, my clothes. We all getting up. <laughs> on the day of the Lord, the Lord's day. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord, that my feet will touch the door, will touch the floor, will walk up the aisle of spiritual Zion, that the size of the north, the city of the king, will receive a worshiper, that I will breathe out worship, I will breathe out praise, I will magnify the Lord, and I'm just saying, will you magnify the Lord with me? Will you come and exalt his name? together. Hallelujah. It makes a difference. Oh, they say we can't touch, we can't high five, but I'm telling you, it feels good when I can at least elbow, hey, I can elbow somebody. Huh? Oh, it's a difference when we're all in the house of the Lord. And so, and so this is what is not being experienced. Listen, ain't no more gathering people than Jews into the temple to hear the reading of the word and hear an explanation of the scriptures, but under a heathen government, under Queen Mother Athalia, they stopped and they were so scared of the government, the queen, that they did what she wanted them to do. It was so bad. Okay, a little bit of reading. I, we're in my sermon, but let me help. It was so bad that, let's just say, she got murdered 
and they put Joash, a little boy. They said, listen, queen mother got to go. Put the boy on. Huh? We, we'll have someone to look over him, but God is not pleased with... See, we're looking for experience. God is looking for those that have his heart. Come on, somebody. And so the cry to the church is, repent, reap, pray. See, some people want to pray. <laughs> uh, no, we got to repent, reap, damn pray. Did you get that? Repent, reap, damn pray. Cry, God save the people. Here you go, here you go. We love 2 Chronicles 7, 14. Oh, it's a theme verse for people through the year. We love it. But today, let's read it in context. We abuse scripture. Let's get the real width and depth and breadth of the meaning of this text. So we'll read 2 Chronicles 7, 13 through 16. All right, here we go. If I shut up heaven that there will be no rain. Oh, watch this now, word. Or oh, if I command the locusts. You see? Right, Junior Missionary, you see? If I command the locusts to devour the land, or oh, if I send pestilence among my people, if, this is what you like, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek, told you, my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, see that thing? then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and mine ears attend unto the cry that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house, that my name may be there forever, and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. God wants to be in his house, but he wants to be with the real people. He wants to be with the people that understand his ways and that choose to do his ways and not trying to play him. Play the kingdom. The first move is on the church, and when the church is unmoved, Heaven, heaven's bowels of compassion and tender mercy are not released to the land as it could be. Come on, somebody. In other words, you will continue seeing the devil wreak havoc upon the land. I, I don't know. Yet, if God has a people, if God can hear the cry of a chosen remnant, Come on. Uh, they may be injured, but they're calling. You see, that's the key. If God hears his people crying aloud, look at what God will do. Verses 20 and 21 now, back to the text. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hind apart toward the utmost sea. And his stink shall come up, and his ill savor shall come up, because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. In other words, if the church gets right, does right, then God says, I'll take care of your enemies. Remember earlier we read that, hey, people of God were running. The army was coming behind them, and everything the army, just like locusts, laid it out desolate. God said, what? You turn for me, and I'll turn them around. I'll make your enemy flee. Come on. See, I like being more than a clumper. Yeah, yeah, come on. Come, 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 come. Oh, you don't recognize who I serve 50 years here. Come, 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 come. You don't think that God's talking, but he's talking to me. Come, 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 come. Uh-huh. Come on with your army. Come on with your church. Come on any way you want. Come on with your kinship. Come on with your kind. Come on, but come, come. You don't understand. Somebody got to get it now. I've already cried. I've already prayed. I've already wept before God. I've already asked God, what you want me to do, God? How you want me to handle it? And God said, you just keep on you keep on working. Wow. Worship. Watch. Wow. Worship. Watch. Wow. Worship. Watch. You keep on worshiping God. That's your job. You've been made to worship me. You have not been made to worry. 
You have not been made to doubt, to, to frown, uh, to be a grumpy Christian. You have been made to lift up the name of Jesus. Didn't Jesus die for you? Didn't he save you from your sins? Didn't he make a way for no way? Don't you have a testimony? Well, remember the testimony when the test comes because God is about to turn your enemy around where they were running after you God will run after them my God God will give you the victory look at God turning things around watch God bless I know. yes that's why I don't mind the heavy message he gave the first Sunday because I'm on the watch God mm -hmm. final verses I believe for today 23 through 26 read be glad then, <laughs> Ooh, you children of Zion, hey, and rejoice. Ain't that something? Not only be glad, but show it. <laughs> be glad and rejoice. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you what? The former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Folks, that means when it's not supposed to rain, when the fields are supposed to be dry, God said, no, I'm going to bring some water for Jesus. Huh? So somebody who needs a job should have called that right there. Huh? That when Bermuda's dry, when it's desolate, when it's desperate, God said, what? You worship me. Huh? You come before me, and I will cause a downpour. Anybody looking for a downpour, a blessing? Anybody looking for God to do the extraordinary, the above all, the supernatural well all you got to do is keep on praising him and he will cause the latter rain and the former rain to fall in the first month 24 hallelujah come on somebody latter rain it was supposed to come later but it happened now Ow! hey it was scheduled to happen in a few months but God said let it happen now hey hey it was supposed to be delayed, but God said, here you go, darling. No. Oh, oh, thank you, God. I receive that. 24, it says, because remember, the locusts had come. Oh, look, look, check, check, Lord, up in the rain, right? And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the fats shall overflow. <laughs> with wine and oil. <laughs> In other words, folks, we're going to be blessed abundantly. The fruit of the vine, it's no longer dry. The trees are growing. My God, the greenery, huh? Oh, come on now. And, and, and here we are. Uh, uh, and I will restore, yes. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the cankerer and the caterpillar and the palmerer, my great army, which I sent among you. My God, he sent it, but it's sending blessings beyond that. If you repent after each, he's coming back with blessings. Final verse for today. <laughs> and ye shall eat in plenty. Look at this. And be satisfied. And when you eat in plenty, and you're satisfied, what? And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Lord of mercy, I thought I took the earring out with that. My people shall never be, I'm never going to be ashamed. God, by your word, God, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, as I stand here before you, your servant, oh, that as you look at my heart, as you try the reins of my heart, that God, because I love you, God, because I serve you, God, I know that we will not suffer we will not stumble but God you're gonna bring plenty and we shall eat and we shall be glad and we shall rejoice and guess what God it's not for me but that the world Bermuda the sin of man the sin of woman will see how what you've done for me and say God there must be a God so God you get the glory God, you get the glory. God, you get the glory. Ha, ah, yeah, shake it. And so, yes, sir, in the beginning of 2022, I urge you 
to consecrate yourself afresh. Leave behind old race places of thought and deed. Rend your heart and allow God to come afresh into your heart, director. For God desires that there be restoration. After devastation, there is restoration. After annihilation, there is restoration. After frustration, there is restoration. After litigation, there is restoration. After disorientation, there is restoration. After misinformation, there is restoration. Why? Because our God restores. Watch God bless. Put your hands together for the word, for the word of God.